Uh, welcome. It's going to f uh, this talk is going to kind of continue in the vein that's kind of happened in the last couple of talks, which is going to be awesome. It's going to add to that picture for you. Um, but before we get there, um, uh, just everybody just pause, take a deep breath. If you have been sitting down and you want to stand up for this, you're more than welcome. Um, I am well aware of my social responsibility right now because I am between you and lunch. So um, I am go this is timed for 30 minutes and we are going to stop in 30 minutes time. Uh, if you want to do questions and stuff at lunchtime, we'll do all that kind of stuff. So take a deep breath. Okay, in and out. Um, what I want you to do is um, think of a time um, or how many times in the last couple of years or in your life have you ever said kind of one of these things? It's impossible. I'll never make it. I'll quit. I'll fail. It won't work. That's not going to happen. Um, now, maybe there are people out there who are thinking, oh, I'd love to do couch to 5K, I'd love to do a half marathon, I'd love to do a marathon, I'd love to do an ultra. Well, are there any crazy ultra people in the room? There's always one. No. Wow, okay, they haven't turned up today. Um, uh, but it's that whole kind of piece around some challenges being put in front of you and something automatically stops you. Um, I was having a conversation with, uh, so, uh, with some uh, potential trainers for scrum.org and we were kind of musing over the reasons why they might not apply to be a scrum.org trainer. Some of that comes down to actually some innate fear of doing whatever, it's doing something different. They're not going to be respected or taken in by the community. It falls into kind of probably one of these categories. And we've all got one of these stories inside of us. What I want to do is present to you this picture, which is like the what ifs. But what if this could happen? This is uh, me and a very good friend of mine um, somewhere up a mountain on a really lovely snowy day um, carrying some ridiculous weight with two very fluffy dogs. Um, you know, a lot of people would have said, oh man, it's too cold, not going to do it. It's, got, it's too much weight, it's too high, never going to do that. We had a load of fun getting lost in snowdrifts and stuff. But there's always that what if. And the what if leads to regrets. You can't spend your whole life regretting stuff. So my name's Andy Hiles. Um, I wrote this lovely book, um, uh, and I did a lovely kind of funky cover, co uh, cover for it. Um, as you probably tell with the tattoos, I kind of I'm all about kind of art and stuff like this. Uh, this talk isn't about that book. I'm not here to sell you the book, right? Uh, I'm a professional scrum trainer of scrum.org. I'm a professional Kanban trainer of Pro Kanban. I have some things that are very dear to me in my life, and uh, there are two of them up in that kind of top uh, right corner, as it is on this one. These are my two little monkeys. Okay, that's my, that's my life. I'm going to cuddle down in, uh, down in Cornwall. So, um, that's just me. Um, this talk is called The Performance Ethos. Um, it used to be called The Performance Mindset, and I started digging into um, uh, the term mindset, and actually it came out a little bit um, more dogmatic than we are used to it being used. Right? We hear that term a lot, and there's a few terms in here which we can easily associate with what we do very quickly. Once you start to dig into them, actually, ethos fits us a lot better. Ethos is about behaviours, the way we conduct ourselves, the way we um, go about taking on a new challenge. That's ethos. So I changed this to be the performance ethos, and this is kind of picking up from the previous talk around that whole purpose thing. You know, Dan Pink has that very famous thing, that autonomy, mastery, purpose, and it's a great talk, and I'm uh, in no way kind of going, oh, it's a terrible book and all that. No, it's great. There's one thing that always gets me about that, though, is it, he has a line which is the moment you take money or you pay people enough to take money off the table, right, all of those autonomy, mastery, purpose things kick in. OK, so you need to pay people a lot of money for those things to be true. Not entirely, OK? So we kind of go back to this, right? I couldn't, I'd never be able to, you know, and the I can'ts. Um, I'm going to make everybody feel really terrible who's got kids in the room now. Um, uh, how many times have you said, I can't do that? I, said, like, I can't do that, sunshine. I can't build. I can't spend the time with you uh, to do that Lego, right? Um, I once heard somebody express, um, I'm, I'm uh, sorry, I'm just realizing I'm going to be hated by the camera person for like, going up and down. Um, I once somebody, uh, heard somebody talk about, I can't being an excuse not to. Right, so what you're telling your kids, sorry, it's going to really hurt your heart, it hurts my heart when I think about it, is, uh, <laughs> sorry, my lovely, beautiful child, I don't want to spend time with you right now. It's like, oh, that's so horrible. But I can't is one of those excuses. Right, it's like a, just an excuse not to do something. This is me on the side of a mountain with no choice. I've got no choice to use I can't. I have to. I have to go forward because I, I can't go back and I, can't, I have to go forward because back meant, you know, eight, ten miles the other way. 
equal ground, didn't have a choice. Forwards, probably equal distance, again, over, over mountains, etc. Right? I can't didn't kick in there. So there's something in that which is, I have to do this regardless of what's going on. At the age of 41, I did something I never expected to do. This is me looking really like motivated. I was 10th in a race um, over the top of a uh, mountain in South Wales. Uh, pretty extreme race. You can see I'm, <laughs> I'm looking kind of like, get me through this RV. I want to get out of here. Um, uh, I ended up being the guy I've kind of blanked out. I ended up being really good mates with him um, in the end because me and him ended up kind of competing through that whole race. I was something like 10th. It was pretty awesome. It was an awesome day. When I was 16, I used to play rugby. I played for Bristol schools when I was much younger. Um, and about the age of 16, I played a rugby match and I obliterated my right knee. I ended up in hospital, I ended up being knocked out, black eye, and an obliterated knee, and it was a great game. It was a really, really good game of rugby. But I was told at that point I'd never do any physical sport ever again. That was it, I was, and I believed that. You're 16, you're impressionable. So you believed that this knee wasn't recoverable enough to do anything in life. And actually, for the next five or 10 years, I tried. I tried to do, get back into rugby. I tried to do um, uh, amateur games of uh, rugby sevens, and every time my knee stopped me. And it took me a long time, you know, up until age of about 35 or so, before actually my physicality got to a point where I could start doing stuff. Right? It's not a poor me story. Right? That's just a, things take time. So when we start to talk about this idea of transformation, um, this is when it really grates on me. We are not butterflies, right? And people go into transformation, they go, oh, it's just like one state to another and suddenly it's gonna be magic. It's not true, right? You're not butterflies, your teams aren't butterflies, your organizations aren't butterflies, and actually, butterflies, there's more to the story, right? It's the whole ecosystem, it's like the, the um, uh, Lion King, the circle of life, right? Things come back around. My nine-year-old's got butterflies at the moment, he, well, he's got caterpillars. And we're trying to get them into butterflies. It's, if anyone's done that, my God, the stress. <laughs> the stress you have. But we hear this word. This is another word we use a lot. Transformation. We're going to do a transformation. Into what? Where are you going, right? What does that actually mean for you? And this plays not just from the organization side of things. Your organization wants to transform. Cool. What is that? Right. Your team, therefore, need to obey whatever that transformation thing is, and then it comes down to you. Now, we all know we don't transform unless there's something in it for us. Right? That's just a fact of life. We are not going to go and do something different. Um, uh, we are not going to do a couch to 5K unless we really, really, truly want it. It's just not going to happen. So an organization setting that standard for us, it's got to come down to the people. Unfortunately, it's a little bit selfish. So we need this idea of a learning organization and something around shared performance. We need this shared idea of what it means to transform, where are we going, where, what are we going to do, how are we going to get better. And this is my definition of transformation. Actually, when we start to look at it, it's got nothing to do with transformation. It's all about increasing and sustaining performance. Now think of that time when you've gone and run a race or you've gone and done something different, something that is purposeful around performance for yourself, for your family, for your team, for your organization, for your product. What did that look like? What, what happened? Because it wasn't necessarily about just doing it. It was around getting to a point where you were increasing and sustaining that performance. When we look at how people um, go into races, um, typically people train and train and train and train and they get to a, a peak point of performance, they're going to smash that race. Yeah, good, did it, woo -hoo. And then it's like, what next? Oh, shit, now I'm going to just go back and eat cake, right? Um, something Gordon Ramsay said uh, recently, whether you like him or not, right? Um, uh, he said, actually, uh, getting a Michelin star is actually harder to keep than it is to obtain. You think of the standards for uh, uh, like a Michelin style restaurant, the detail, the cleanliness they have to do. Whenever they serve any dish, it has to be absolutely bang on every time, regardless. Is that how you perform? Is that how your team's performed? Is that your organizational vision of transformation and performance? Right, so we have to think about that when we're starting to talk about transformation. So we start to think of this idea of sustaining performance. We want to get to a point where actually, yes, we're good enough, but we still need an uplift. And I was reminded of this on Dan Vacanti's course on Thursday and Friday. It's great to get to a point where your team's using flow, 
but actually you want to push them that little bit more, don't you? So right, we want to get better. We want to do, we want to do more. We intrinsically as human beings want to be performance. We want to feel like we've got that level of motivation where we're smashing it. It gives us a really good feeling. So there are three elements that come into this. Um, none of these will be brand new terms to you. Right? They're just going to be positioned in exactly the same or in a slightly different way that you would have heard. You know, we need these ideas of goals. So I'm going to be really dangerous in here, and this is why I ask you to have a um, uh, social respect back. I've got some social respect. I'm going to get you to lunch. Uh, I want some social respect back. Uh, I'm going to give you two minutes. Now, this is going to be really dangerous in this room, okay? Two minutes. Turn to the person on your left. Don't do it yet. Uh, when I say go, um, turn to the person on your left. What is either your uh, vision? What's your transformation vision? Have you got something at the moment you want to go and do? What's your organization's transformation vision? What does that look like? Do you know what that is? What's their goal? What's their purpose? What are they trying to get out of it? What does that mean to you? So turn to the person on your left or your right. Two minute conversation. What the hell is this? Go. <laughs> See, it's a dangerous thing opening that up to a conference because you just talk and talk and talk. It's a very long two minutes. Uh, this talk used to be a lot longer. I used to, this is a really highly self-reflective talk, but um, we just don't have the time in 30 minutes. So there's those huge topics in there. So we're gonna, gonna skim through, but I want to give some kind of little kind of self-reflection kind of moment in there. Um, the interesting thing of all of your conversations is actually what you'll have been trying to explore is this question. It's like, it's not just about the transformation being a state to state. Thank you for yawning. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm keeping you up. Uh, it's not about, it's not just state to state. It's actually, there's a reason why we're doing some transformation. There's a reason why you get off that couch and go and run. There's a reason why you're gonna go and smash it over mountains. There's a reason why your organization wants to be better. There's a reason why your team want to be better, and they do. Right? And there's, then it comes down to you. So what part can you play in that? Um, so what I want you to do, there's going to be these kind of like call outs. Um, this is where it's going to be self-reflected. If you've got a pen and paper, this is your kind of opportunity. If you want to kind of think about this over lunch, please do. Picture yourself achieving whatever goal that it is that you've got in mind. You might have one that you're, you're prepping for this year. You might have just something that you want to do differently. Um, you know, what does it look like to achieve that goal? Write, write it down, express it. Explain what it would mean for you to achieve that goal. Hold that in your mind, it's a pretty awesome thing. I remember when I did my race, that feeling of coming down the mountain, I knew exactly my timing on every stage of that race. Somebody asked me, they said, um, they said, oh, what, what would failure mean to you? You know, what would it mean to fail? And I said to them, failure for me would, me, would be not showing up. It would be failure to turn up. And there's more to that story coming up. It's because I had this idea of what I wanted to go and achieve. It was so super, uh, super important to me. So write down Express. How does that make you feel? What would you get out the back of doing what you're doing? Now, Eddie Jones um, said something amazing. I was flicking through the TV one day. Eddie Jones, the rugby coach for England, this was a good few years ago, happened to say this right, from a vision point of view. I want England to be the team that everybody stops or the whole nation stops to watch on TV. That's a freaking cool vision, right? Imagine that. The whole nation. I remember being 18, Euro 96. Um, Lots of football people going, ah, oh, yeah. Um, uh, being in the centre of Bristol, apologies for the pirate accent, that's just me. Um, uh, being in the centre of Bristol and it com being completely dead, everyone's in a pub watching England do their best effort to go and win that World Cup. Isn't that an awesome vision? So he said, like, this is what I want for my team, this is what I want for my organisation, I want everybody to get behind this thing. It's like, freaking awesome. How many times have you worked in an organisation that gives you that kind of feel? How many times have you been in front of a team and you've given them this feel? Whenever I um, start to work with new teams, I always say, I want this team to be the best team in the whole organization. We are gonna smash it. We're gonna do our best efforts to be the team that everybody stops to look at, to wonder how they're doing what they're doing. It's a really simple ask. So what are you gonna bring to that? You know, what are each and every one on this team gonna bring to that to make that happen? Okay, let's talk about control. Um, uh, pause, take a deep breath. So, um, think about that time you really wanted to achieve something. Like you wanted that thing so much you did absolutely everything you could to make sure it happened. 
Like nothing would step in your, stand in your way. You put everything into it, your strength, your focus. And when you achieved it, it was awesome. So hold that feeling in your mind. What we're talking about here is around attitude and the preparation, the effort and the mindset that goes into winning and achieving. Now, each one of these is, again, a talk in its own right. But you think about when you have to actually go and smash an event or do what it is you're going to do, you're going to go and achieve something. Everyone talks about preparation, 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 but it is so essential to winning the game. And the attitude that you bring to that day, that whole idea around what's it going to mean if you fail, actually failure is me not showing up. That's, like, that's my attitude. I'm going to bring everything I can to win whatever, regardless. Thank you. you know, then it comes down to the effort, putting that effort and that builds your mindset. Now, there's, there's sort of kind of like focusing on what you can control, not what you can't. There's a couple of lessons in here. Um, don't, uh, sorry for the squeamish people around eyes, don't um, like carve half your cornea off your left eye um, before you go and do a race. Um, Things I can't control. There's a lovely thing when, when, uh, when we're talking about the, the Stacey Matrix and the kind of the known knowns, the unknowns. And I, I like um, the uh, Donald Rumsfeld. They're like, there are things we know we know. There are things we know we don't know. There are things we do not know we do not know are going to happen, right? like ruining your eye. Um, uh, there's also doing it twice. Right? Some idiot did it twice. I woke up on the morning. Um, uh, so I did it this second time, I self-medicated. The first time I went and saw a doctor and he said, do this. I went, okay, cool. When I did it the second time, which was a couple of weeks before the race, I just self-medicated. I was like, yeah, screw this. Pff, whack, a, whack a bandage on it. Looked like a pirate. We're all good. I woke up on the morning of the race and uh, I was, uh, uh, what tends to happen is scar tissue and I basically pulled all the scar tissue off and I was basically went into that race half blind, right? So I was still on that. I'm going to show up, right? Regardless. Uh, that was a magic moment. Um, so that when you're starting to think about what performance means for you and your team and your organization, it's all about the things you can control, not the things you can't. You might be aware a little bit of the things that are going to be out of your control. Great, identify them, do something with them. But actually focusing on the performance and getting better and doing what you can do is going to be far more be beneficial to spend your time and effort on. Um, final point of this is resilience, okay? So remember these words, I quit. That one that hurts you when you talk to your kids. <laughs> I give up and I can't. Um, these are what we call automatic negative thoughts. Um, there's a coaching technique called positive intelligence where they put them into saboteurs. Saboteurs live with inside us and they, they act like little kind of sprites on our shoulders and they come along and say, you're not good enough. You're not going to do it. That couldn't happen. You won't be doing this or they'll say, you know, other things, right? Everybody has this one called the judge and the judge is that one that says you're not good enough. You're never going to do it. And they sit there. You can't get rid of them. They will always be there. And depending on you know, your, uh, what your ex experiences in life, you'll have different, um, uh, different saboteurs that will appear at different points. Now, the key thing here to do with all your saboteurs is to identify them. So that I can't, I won't, so I wouldn't be able to, it'll never happen. When that happens, think about it. Next time you say that, next time you think that, Next time you're meeting and you hear that, what did, why are they saying that? What, what is it in there? What's telling you or that person that it's not possible? Let's catch it. Let's readdress it and refocus it. Now, from a generic personal performance point of view, um, positive affirmations are freaking awesome. Right, the, this is a great one. I can, I will, I must. I like that one. Um, there's one which is used by... Um, a uh, certain section of the military, unrelenting pursuit of excellence, that's what we're going after. Um, there's a book by a guy who adopted a dog in, um, and I always forget the name of the book, and I, I really apologize. He adopted a dog in Iraq at its lowest moment, and he talks about the dog having relentless positivity. Um, this is my spaniel. He is a pain in the backside. He does have relentless positivity, <laughs> um, but isn't it just like an awesome thing? I'm sorry to the cat people out there, but dogs are awesome. It's just, it's just how the world works. Now, with all of this stuff, there's also the opposite side. Right? So we tend to spend a lot of time looking out there and going, oh, they're doing so much better. Oh, they've done that. You know, they're amazing. They're, whatever that looks like. Don't do it. 
right? It's not healthy for yourself. Again, you're kind of falling back into that saboteur mode. And the other thing to note is it's okay to have a crappy day. Um, the most ironic thing that's happened to me today, I've spent the most, most of the morning going, oh, I'm going to be really terrible up on stage, I'm not going to do it, right? And, and then the most ironic thing is I knew I had a slide in here that says thoughts only have power if you believe in them, which is incredibly true. You know, oh, you're going to fail, you're going to fall off the stage. You know, it's like, no, it's not true. So when you're thinking about performance and you're thinking about all of this stuff, try and think about what a resilient statement means to you. Right. What, what, what positivity can you spin to keep you pushing forward? So those are the kind of like three very, very quick factors of performance ethos. So my final thoughts with all of this stuff. Right. This is not a journey for the faint of heart. Right. So if you're looking at increasing and sustaining performance, pushing past that peak, right, and pushing into a space where you are truly performant, it's not a a uh, space where you can become a master in one session. And by, uh, by the way, it's not a dig at anything in particular, if you read too much into that. Okay? Um, you will have to work hard. You will have to practice, and you will fail, and you will fall down. But the cool thing is, you'll get back up. And that's the important thing. Okay? And regardless of what life throws at you, you will get back up. If you want it, you will get back up. Only you can decide what happens next. That is on you. Your organization may have set that goal, that vision, that thing we want to go and do. They can't do it without you. So there must be some responsibility to kind of bring that together. Right? What does it mean to be performant? And only you can make sure that whatever your achievement is, is, net, is met. This is me, um, you can't really see on this projector, uh, getting the only thing I got for hitting what they call the sub four club, which is doing the race under four hours. And you just get a badge and a handshake, which is pretty awesome. And then you get some hot food and you get to inspect your feet, which is just a, not a good place to be. What I want you to do at the back of it is go back to that, that thought around when you achieve whatever it is that you want to go and achieve, if you're going to go for Couch 5K, if you're going to go for that ultra, that marathon, that half marathon, if you're just going to go for that long walk every day, right, what are you going to do to, to, to push that forward? Where are you going to go with that thing? That's really, really, really super important. It's not just about getting to the peak, it's pushing that forward. This is where I just want to bring the... Um, so I have seen somebody who I would regard as the toughest person I've ever met. Like mentally tough, mentally fit, completely crash. Now, if you've ever seen, met somebody who has completely crashed, like it's, it properly scarred me. Uh, it, and again, it's not a poor me, it properly scarred me. What I want you to do is over the last couple of years or more, I've spotted more things like this on social media from really high performant people or who you would perceive high performant people. I mean, this one just says, this is a fitness group I'm part of and it says, got up Wednesday, went for a run, got up this afternoon, just feeling crappy. You know, the ups and downs are bloody killing me. Like that speaks for somebody who's not having a good time. Right? They're trying to push themselves hard. They're trying to go for that thing. They're trying to push themselves forward. They feel that relentless pressure. Just watch out for each other would be my thing. Right? We all have a responsibility to keep an eye on our friends. And if you see these things going on social media, reach out to them. It's super, super important. Really, really super important. So yeah, so while performance is really cool, go after it, right? Just, just be mindful of that stuff. And this is a picture of me and my best mate. There we go. Uh, that was the performance ethos. Not too bad. Silence. Good. <laughs> we have like two minutes. Questions. Cool. Go for it. I like your analogy. One, if one person's very motivated to get up the mountain, but you're working with a team or an organisation, what have you seen that works well to help make other people 
it's all got to come down to that sense of purpose. I, I, I think it was said earlier, right, the, the whole the idea of purpose is so super important in whatever we do. The, the reason we get up in the morning to go and do whatever we do has a purpose. You're going to be working with a bunch of people who might have lost that purpose for whatever reason. Um, you know, what are the strategies you can do? Explore what the purpose, why the purpose is missing. I mean, it's like the same thing in any life, uh, in any kind of situation, in any context. It's going to be like, a, I don't know, but like I would be, first of all, exploring what is it they're missing from that purpose that they're not getting or they're not seeing. Even more, is there something else going on in their life that means the purpose is misdirected? Um, that, and again, I come back to the, like, the social responsibility and looking after each other thing is just as important as kind of all the other work stuff that goes on. Did that kind of help? I know it's not a direct answer, but it's one of the challenges of doing what we do. I don't know, I'm not going to hold you for lunch, go. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Good.